All right, next thing I'd like to do is put the computer together fully and power it on outside the case just to make sure that we don't have any problems. And nothing surprises us once we get it inside the case. Uh, the only difference is this is going to be powered by a Rosewell 550 watt modular power supply. Uh, it's a lot more than 220 that's in there, uh, but it's one of the lowest ones I have externally. So it'll have to do for now. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is get this CPU installed. Here's the Pentium G4400. I need to uh, catch myself almost every time I mention it. I almost call it a Pentium 4. And I know that's not what it is. Okay. And let's put that aside. We'll save that because if I ever want to package this thing back up, it's always nice to have the protector uh, for all those pins. Alright, so we'll put that aside. That's installed. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of... Uh, we have Arctic MX4 Thermal Compound. I'm going to put the perfect amount on here. Perfect. Alright, take our CPU cooler. And good. Now we're going to go ahead and plug in the header. It goes in that way. Okay, CPU cooler is installed properly. Alright, next we're going to put in our RAM. But okay, we got those installed. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is our front panel connectors. There's only two that it uses, a push button and a light. So we'll just, we'll have those so I know this board is powered up properly. Next is the SSD. Now we'll make sure to run power to everything. There we go, and okay. All right, so now we have SATA power. So we have the SSD here and the hard drive here. And then over on this side, we're going to connect our mouse and keyboard, which is a single plug, so I have those on a hub. CPU power and 24 pin ATX. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the power supply and smoke test. Everything's looking good. Let's get into the BIOS. Clearly something isn't working. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm going to unplug this particular hard drive and see if that solves my problem. Oh, okay. It did. All right, something's wrong with this hard drive? That's very strange. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. Okay, date and time look correct. Uh, we have 8 gigabytes of RAM. However, yep, extreme memory profile. XMP is enabled, that's good. Uh, CPU specifications. So you can see here, yep, it is an Intel Pentium CPU G4400 running at 3.3 gigahertz. It's only seeing the one drive, so I only have that one installed right now. We have another, uh, this is a Seagate 500 gigabyte hard drive. This came out of my brother's computer that I updated uh, late last year. Alright, this still did the same slow loading process. Okay. We're actually getting into Windows a lot faster than we were last time, with the last two drives. I am seeing, we're seeing both drives right away. It's a good sign. These are the drives that I'm going to be using in this computer now. So, we'll begin the Windows 10 installation procedure. You've more than likely seen it many, many times before, so we'll we'll cut back when we get to the the good part, the good parts. We're all set. We're now uh, we're going to tear this apart again and then reinstall it inside of the computer case. All right, let's get these components into the case. A uh, few things first. Uh, this motherboard doesn't have 
three USB headers, just as the one that I can find. So, uh, because this front panel, not counting the audio, uses three USB headers, uh, one for each set of USB-A ports, and then one for the SD and compact flash and this one USB-A up here, I've decided we're, I'm just going to be utilizing this one USB port, SD card, and compact flash slot. Uh, but this was the cable. This is much too short, seeing as on the motherboard, the USB header is all the way over here. So, I went and found a longer USB header cable, and we're going to use this to connect to that. Uh, even the other two that were in here are too short. However, I'm not going, since I'm not going to use them or plug them in, I'm going to disconnect those as well. So unfortunately, these four USB ports down here will not be used. And also, I put the SSD and the hard drive in their uh, adapters already and then installed them into this caddy. So in the five and a quarter bay is the uh, 500 gigabyte hard drive, the three and, a, three and a half inch, while in the three and a half inch slot is the two and a half inch SSD. Let's get started. First things first, the I.O. shield for the new motherboard. I'm going to pop that in. Okay. And then our motherboard. Uh, this has two standoffs here as well as two elevated uh, mounting holes here. I will just go ahead and get everything lined up properly on the I.O. shield and then on the screw holes and we're good. Okay, uh, next I'm going to route CPU power connector over to here. Good. 24 pin. We'll plug in those four first. Alright, and now we got the 20 pin in. Our front panel USB. Alright, front panel USB is installed. Make sure our front panel headers and front panel I.O. is there. Good. Okay. Okay, CPU fan, CPU power, 24 pin, RAM is installed, front panel USB, front panel audio, SSD, hard disk drive, front panel there. Okay, do a real quick power on, just to make sure that everything on the case works properly. There it is, our new Plex server machine. There we go. The Plex server is now set up and running properly. I have Plex installed and running and it runs very quickly. I have already successfully connected to it and streamed video to other computers on my local network. I've yet to set up the external, but that's okay. Things to improve in the future would be a more powerful power supply and changing out some of the adapters for the hard drives and the SSD to something a little nicer. The ones I have are very rudimentary and not all that great. I'm going to find a nice spot to tuck this away. I hope you'll join me again in future projects. Until then, have a great day.